Lead poisoning. Lead poisoning can occur when the lead builds up in the body, usually over a long period of time. This excessive lead in the body can cause serious health problems. Young children are vulnerable to lead poisoning, which can affect their mental and physical development. So what is lead poisoning? It is a medical condition caused by increased levels of lead in the body. It interferes with different normal process of the body, and it is particularly toxic to children. Why this happen? Lead and calcium compete for the protein that's important for the function of the body, especially the nervous system. The lead can displace the calcium from that protein. So the calcium that has an important role in the body function will not be able to function properly. How can we simplify the signs and symptoms of lead poisoning? If you take the word lead, the L will be lines in the gingiva and in the long bones. the E encephalopathy and erythrocyte basophilic stippling the A abdominal colic and anemia and the D drop foot and drop rest That is probably the easiest way to remember the effect of lead poisoning. So let's just take it in a slight details. The lead inhibit the enzymes that's needed to make the heme. That means we cannot make homoglobin and you will have basophilic stippling of the cells because lead inhibit the ribosomal RNA degradation. The RBCs will retain aggregates of ribosomal RNA that causes the stippling of the cells. How about the gums? You will have a lead line in the gingiva, they call it Birkin's line, this gray-blue line is visible at the margin of the gum at the base of the teeth. Also, the long bones will have lead lines in the metaphysis. They look like white bands on an x-ray because the lead is collected in these white bands. The width and density of the lead lines reflect chronic exposure. At the RPC level, you will find the anemia and also the basophilic stippling of the RBCs. Also, the patient will have encephalopathy and the patient may also have headache and memory loss. Another area is abdominal colic. The patient may have pain, cramps, and constipation. Another area of interest is foot drop. The patient will have permanent damage to the central nervous system and the peripheral nerves. So how this condition happen? Usually from old homes, they used leaded paint, but now it's not allowed. So the kids will ingest lead with the paint of the wall. It can also be environmental from inhalation of lead particles in the air or it can be from drinking water, as we've seen recently. Exposure for a long time can cause serious problems. Children are the most vulnerable. A kid will be irritable, tired, they may have low IQ, and not attentive. He may get encephalopathy, may get cerebral edema, with nausea and vomiting, gait disturbance, and seizures. How about the adult? 
Usually it's occupational exposure. You will get personality changes. The wife will complain about the husband, that his personality changed. The patient may get headache, neuropathy, weakness, foot and wrist drop, may get a stomach ache. Both kids and the adult will get a pale skin from anemia because lead interfere with the normal formation of hemoglobin. How do you diagnose it? Well, history of exposure, serum lead level, usually more than five. Some people may use bigger numbers. If you do blood test, CBC, you will find microcytic anemia. And in peripheral smear of the blood, you will find the basophilic stippling, dots, ribosomes. And you also find the serum iron is normal. How do you treat it? Number one, eliminate the source of lead. Number two, plating agent, which is the use of various drugs that help to remove the lead from the body. It binds the lead into a form that the body can excrete. Use it if the lead level is more than 45 in children and more than 70 in adult. The dimer caprol is used in encephalopathy and succimer in patient without encephalopathy. How do you remember the word succimer? You remember it by using the wording, it sucks to be a kid that drinks lead. Lead toxicity from bullets. Sometimes lead toxicity occurs from bullet missiles. So the bullet enter a joint or is introduced into the cerebrospinal fluid. And if it goes into the synovial tissue or the cerebrospinal fluid, the patient will get severe synovitis and low-grade lead poisoning. The condition is rare but can occur. Another method of lead toxicity is from the soil. If the water is toxic, the soil also can be toxic, and the patient may get lead poisoning through ingestion of food or food products. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.